Welcome back to the show this morning. Grateful for your time there. The final this morning talks about the president trip to the Western region and uh, Western North regions. Uh, cocoa suffered under NDC. Production fell from 1 million tons to 750,000. The president has been talking there. And then University of Education Guidiba staff files lawsuit seeking to remove Professor Afrobroni as vice chancellor. I'm sure you know of what happened there yesterday. Uh, the chief of staff says her appointment was a big risk the president took. Uh, Ghana is the investment destination of choice in Africa. The vice president talking there. The Daily Guide, Nana fires Mahama over crocodile tears. Uh, chief of staff on it. Uh, the president trip, uh, he also cut a sword for $77 million uh, Kedah Tal factory in Shama. The Ghanaian Times this morning, uh, tension mounts at the University of Education in Winneba. Professor Avoke storms campus, seeks reinstatement as vice chancellor. Uh, a sports minister will face parliament today over the budget, the nation's ill fated Afghan campaign. It's a big one. Uh, the Daily Graphic Government will protect local firms. President Kufado promises to address unfair competition, and civil servants willing to do politics must bow out. The University of Education Winneba story is also on the front page of the Daily Graphic. My guest to do the talking this morning, Richard Nyama is a member of the NPP's team, and he's here with me. Good morning. I hope you're doing great. Good morning. Uh, thanks for your time with us. Thank you. And a member of the uh, CPP, Madam Roda Ayana, is also here. Good morning, too. Good morning. Hope you're doing great. I'm doing fine, thanks. We're still waiting for our third guest to join us. But we could start a conversation uh, quickly, a quick one of that. Some 70 years ago, uh, President, uh, former President Atameos passed on to eternity. Uh, we're told of some activity today uh, in remembrance of his passing on. A quick one. And then we can move on. Seven years on, um, we lost Professor Mills. It, it, the, the nation um, has learned from his loss and perhaps his legacy. Good morning to our viewers. Um, seven years ago, I think Ghana woke up to very sad news in passing of President um, Mills. Um, I guess some lessons have been learned, and that major one is that um, this life is not our own. Mm. At any given time, you can be called by the maker. Um, he was the one president that we had that actually taunted peace. He believed that we're all Ghanaians, um, like people used to say, father for all. And um, the accolade given to him deservedly, as Hene. Um, we saw in him mm -hmm. a person who wanted to take this country out of whatever um, hardships we had, but not doing it with vindictiveness or vendetta or revenge, but actually doing it out of the love of the people of this country. So as I sit here and I reflect, I miss a man who would have um, put this country together mm -hmm. as one, who would have moved us on as one people with one common destiny. And for that reason, I, I, I miss Professor Mills. But I think that today we should also reflect on all the good things that he has done. He was human, he might have had his faults, but above everything else, he gave all his best for this country. Mm -hmm. He was one of the few um, heads of states that we've had that have died in office, and we've not heard of corruption tax, we've not heard of all those things, negatives, that people say about um, presidents of late. Richard, Professor Mills' legacy, we're, we're learning as a, a nation from it? Um, let me say good morning to your viewers, your good self, and uh, my senior sister. And uh, use this opportunity, I think it's been about a, a month or so since uh, the infamous incident I had on your platform with you and uh, Sami Jenfi. Uh, let me use this opportunity to personally and publicly apologize to you and the station and uh, to my good brother Sami 
Uh, we've already met on another platform. Mm. I, I extended my apologies to you in private, but I think it's good that I did it in public as well. And uh, let me say it won't happen again. It is unlike me. Right. And uh, it's one of those low points in one's life that you regret. And so I deeply regret that. Um, Professor Mills, one uh, gentleman that uh, with hindsight, you see we all, one way or the other, vilified uh, without reason. He meant well for this country. Mm. His, he, he, he brought a different dimension to politics, uh, i.e. the brotherliness, family-like spiritual persona to our, our politics. And like my sister said, uh, after his passing, uh, at least uh, you can't um, point a finger mm. of any act of corruption against his person or family or, or anyone related to him in that sense. Um, his passing was I think about the lowest point as a nation in our politics in terms of its effect on our psyche and our development. Uh, the way it happened, and I still ask myself, did we learn any lessons? Because uh, it, it exposed our emergency medical system mm. uh, so badly that you couldn't believe at that level the head of state of this country, we didn't have a proper emergency system in place to ensure the best and quickest uh, attention was given. And then my question is, uh, if an incident like that occurred today, will we be able to uh, quickly uh, round this up and give it the best attention? Uh, from the optics I'm seeing, uh, my answer is no. Maybe we are, we are, and I am not aware. But that is one thing we should, mm. we should as a people learn. Uh, our emergency system is very bad, and <clears throat> if it could happen to a president, you can imagine what is happening to the poor, uh, pregnant woman that has to be carried on a motorbike or uh, on the, in a taxi to seek medical emergency on very bad roads. So we need to, uh, as a country, look at these aspects. But you see, his passing also brought along some controversies. And I think recently, as at uh, last month, I was hearing the family asking for uh, his body to be resumed and uh, uh, given to them to go give him a barrier elsewhere. Mm. Why? Because where his final remains were put, mm. we made some pump and pageantry. Let's show <coughs> you the, the, uh, the, the Asunjay Park. Park uh, yes. the, the, the pictures yes. will be on your screen very the, soon. The, 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 what we made of it. And then uh, at the end of the day, when all was said and done, we went to sleep. And the place has been taken up by weeds and uh, uh, weed smokers and all sort of riffraffs. Mm -hmm. But that speaks of our nature as a people towards <clears throat> the dead. We are very hypocritical when it comes to the immediate passing of the person. Mm -hmm. We will not spare any expense to put the person or lay the person to rest. But once that is done, that face is done, you are buried, dead, and forgotten. So that you look around all our cemeteries, and they are an eyesore. They are virtually garbage and rubbish dumps all across. 
you go to the famous of uh, 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 cemetery apart mm. from the military section the other part is nothing to write home about and these are the ones you see looking nice are private ones that people are making business out of so as a, as a people you ask if we have any sense of shame and any sense of uh, reflection and conscience when it comes to these things a general thing. It's, 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 we can we can maintain what we have. It, it cuts across every aspect of our life. No, the head of state of this country passes on. We have a cemetery that is dedicated to him, and uh, I got the impression that subsequent uh, presidents. And what do we do? We leave it to rot. Embarrass him and the family and ourselves. But that is the uh, that is who we are. <laughs> you go to the 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 next cemetery close to it, and it's, it's even in the worst state. Mm. And in other pl uh, places, you can sleep in the cemetery. Houses are on the cemetery. Why we do this to ourselves? I don't get it. But I don't think we served his memory right. Even his uh, the library, the library in Cape Coast was supposed to have been locked now. Yes, mm. because. The person who put it up is old, so manish. What, what, what kind of legacy are we leaving? Madam, I'll get you the chance to talk about if we have kept, uh, I mean, our maintenance culture. But let me introduce my third guest, Aladji Suini, uh, MP for Tamale North, a member of the NDC, has joined us. Good morning. Good morning, We are doing great. I'm terrific. I'll have so know. we've started a conversation. I mean, seven years on, uh, former president, uh, uh, Professor Mills passed on. The key question is if we have been able to I mean, show that kind of respect to him. And we're talking about our maintenance culture, not only our cemeteries, but we put up a public facility and we leave it to rot. Well, Bright, once again, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here and good morning to my colleagues on the panel and good morning to our viewers, especially the very good people of the Tamale North uh, constituency. My sincere apologies for joining you late. Uh, even though I was here earlier, another station uh, had to chase me up here for an interview. And um, yes, it's seven years on, right? Um, when I was on my way to this place, I just thought about um, that day, 24th July, 2012, and how we all woke up like we have this morning, uh, expecting uh, uh, nothing close to what happened um, by, you know, uh, midday or after midday on that day. It was, it was sad and I, I'm sure everybody can still remember exactly where they were when the news got them. That is the nature of, you know, events such as the passing of uh, President Mills. It was so sad and, uh, you know, it's still very difficult for many to shake off, you know, you know, the shock that we all felt uh, that day. Uh, may he continue to rest in perfect peace. And uh, I would like on this note to extend my heartfelt condolences uh, one more time to the family. Because if even for those of us who just uh, knew him, you know, briefly, uh, find it very difficult to uh, forget his goodness and what he represented. You can imagine how it will be for the family and especially uh, Uncle Sam, uh, the brother who is in parliament with, with, with us. And it's sad. Uh, on, in this, on this occasion too, let me take this opportunity to also send my heartfelt commiserations to um, the family of uh, 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 Kakra Samoa. Uh, his mm -hmm. brother, uh, Penin Samoa, also passed on uh, yesterday. Uh, very, very, you know, astute lawyer and uh, prolific writer. Uh, he authored the uh, Abra Epistle. Abra, the Abra, 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 Abra Epistle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In the Daily Graphic. And we are going to miss, you know, his very insightful mm -hmm. write ups. He was a great, great senior comrade. One of my you know, distant uh, uh, producers when I was, uh, you know, on radio. And also, you can call one of my camp distant campaign managers when I decided to join politics. He's a man that we are going to miss so much and may the good Lord also accept him uh, in his bosom. 
now to the memory of Professor Mills today at 8 a.m. The NDC and the uh, family will be laying uh, wreath at the Asumje Park and uh, all well wishes are invited. I'm told the uh, dressing is black and white and so we are all expected to be there. I agree uh, to some extent uh, with some of the reservations that have been raised by uh, Richard in relation to how we as a country have you know treated his memory mm. uh, i think in the heat of the moment a number of things were you know done a number of decisions were taken without uh, consideration to how sustainable you know those decisions could be and how those uh, decisions could outlive you know those who took those decisions because for example the decision to put him at asunje park uh, was not the family decision it was you know an administration's decision it was the government of ghana's decision and the government of ghana is supposed to be uh, in perpetuity it doesn't end because one political party is out of office and the other is in but perhaps if some consideration was done uh, and 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 it was anticipated that you know different administrations will, may treat the site differently. Uh, I'm sure that certain things could have been put in place to make it impossible for anybody to neglect that place mm -hmm. or to give it uh, less attention than it deserves. I mean, so that is that is that is where I put my blame. The decision was good. But the consideration was not done mm. in relation to how sustainable that decision, you know, could be in the light of the changing governments that we have, uh, even though the government of Ghana remains a government of Ghana. So, 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 so I think that as a country, there's a need for us to, you know, uh, 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 use today's event, you know, to, 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 to turn over a new leaf. Let's, let's say never again. Let's say we have learned our lessons. Let's say that he deserves better. And so his gravesite should not be a den of weed smokers. It should not be overgrown by weeds. I mean, he served this country well. In fact, I think that he, he brought some level of calmness. He brought mm -hmm. some level of direction. He brought some level of sincerity and honesty to governance in this country. And he deserves the celebration that we can give him as a country. And I was particularly sad when I heard the family at some point, you know, talk of the, you know, need to perhaps exhume his body and bury him at a place that they can take care of him, I, I, of his remains. Okay. I felt particularly sad by that. And I don't think the government uh, of Ghana must allow that to happen. I think the government must demonstrate to the family that indeed they cherish his memory and that his place, you know, his last place uh, 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 of abode should be, should be decent. Because the whole idea was to okay. make sure that we make it a cemetery for all former heads of state. Okay. And I think it is, it is well placed to serve that purpose. Okay. When I, you I, go to other I, countries, you come back to tourist sites. Okay, but let me speak to you, Madam. Now, Madam, the, the, the maintenance issue and also the fact that if you think that uh, perhaps government should take a decision to uh, relocate the remains to uh, the now that I want to uh, call the the military yeah, area, the where uh, uh, Mr. K uh, Kofi Annan and uh, the others are also resting, is it an idea we can we can think of? Should government yes, do that? Yes, I, I I think so. Mm. I think so because it's either government decides to do that, mm. or we make sure that, like Suyini is saying, mm. all past presidents are going to be interred at that place. But you see, at the end of the day. One of the problems that we have in this country is that we are so polarized in our thinking that we never ever build consensus when it comes to certain very major decisions. Um, at the end of the day, you look at even the statues that represent the big six that is, you know, sprang up all over. You look at the Nanado statue, you look at Dr. Buzia's statue, statue, and even the big six that you meet right at the entrance of our, our city mm. and you ask yourself are we really a people that you know respect all these people who lay down their lives for us um, it's all not well kept 
um, you ask yourself why, and it's because this government comes and doesn't bother because the people who are up there did not belong to That's my to, to, to my uh, uh, party, and that is how it's been. We are using party politics to destroy the very fabric of this country, that which binds us, the love that we all share as a people. Mm. We are using party politics to actually destroy it. Because I don't see why Asumre Park should be left to rot or deteriorate to that extent. When we have a people's, um, a, a public works department, when we have um, a, 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 I'm not cutting, I'm not cutting, but in this direction, I mean, it, someone would suggest that even when the NDC was in power, the Asunjui Park That's what was, I'm trying was, to say. The, was not in the best of shapes. Yeah, but, but the thing is that, should it be so? Because it wasn't, uh, uh, it was another Mahama group, it wasn't uh, uh, a male's uh, uh, kind, leg, of, kind of thing. So that's that it. Way. You understand? Okay. It shouldn't happen. Because mm. parks and gardens should be in charge of state monuments. That's the law. And that's what we know. So we should make sure that the parks and gardens work. And that's how come I was so, so devastated when parts of it were you know, cut out for sale. And we had to talk about it. And finally, um, I'm told that they've, they've, they've stopped. But then the culture of maintenance in this country is really appalling. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you are asking, why is it so? It's either because we do not give enough funding to those institutions that are supposed to maintain the, the structures you know, state structures in this country, mm -hmm. or we just close our eyes and decide that, look, it's none of my business. But I think that um, as we, we move on as a country, we should get our leaders to understand that it doesn't matter. Look, what you do for somebody is exactly what is going to be done to you. To, mm -hmm. to you. Do unto others what you wish others to do unto you. So if you think that you will not uh, uh, keep one person's legacy, proper. Remember that you're also going to be a legacy sometime, and that your legacy will not also be kept proper. So let, moving forward, let's, let's do things as Ghanaians. Let's see everybody as Ghanaian. And to the, to the last point, I keep asking, the widows, the widows of these men, we how, are they how are they faring? Do we care for them? Do we even make society go to them to know that these are the people, the women behind those solid men that we had governing this country? Occasionally you see Mrs. Rollins. How about Mrs. Liman? How is she faring? Then we look at uh, even Lordina Mahama who just left. We hardly see a state function of, of women where we see Mrs. Lordina Mahama sitting there. We don't see uh, 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 Mrs. Uh, Atta Mills. Nadu Mills. Nadu Mills over there. All we see is maybe Nana Kunedu and then the First Lady. How about the others? We should, we should build a country. We shouldn't build it based on partisan lines. It will cripple this country. Richard, it, 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 should we, we can trust the military to keep that place decent and neat. So should we move Professor Mills since he remains there? I don't think it's a solution. Uh, I said in my intro that mm. it's a cultural thing. We will spare no expense when we have to bury the person. After that, we've forgotten. It's, it's, it's in us. We will come and shed crocodile tears and we even pretend we want to go with the person. The next day, he has to take care of himself. You made reference to the fact that uh, uh, even during the NDC, it was that. I remember Kuku and Judova thinking the mm. second year had cause to complain how the place had been abandoned. When he went, it was overgrown with weeds, and he wept. You know, it is it's not a political... Uh, I think basically our sense of awareness when it comes to these things is very uh, absent, I would say. It's a cultural thing that we would have to all of us, uh, all over again take a second look at. We we'll spend a lot when the person is dead. When the person is sick, we don't care to spend. And then when we have laid them to rest, we don't think there's the need uh, to go back there. Mm -hmm. So there's no connection. And yet, when you are being brought up, you are told of the connection between the unborn and the living yes. and the dead. But somehow it looks like we've, we've lost all that connection uh, growing up. As a people, I think we, there's this serious need. I don't know where it happened, but there's a disconnect between our conscience and our culture and what for us today is important. It's like everyone is busy trying to make money. 
there is no uh, patriotism or national. Uh, patriotism is a better word. Nationalism mm. has its own political uh, <laughs> connotations. But as a people, I think we've lost it. A Ghanaian is prepared to sell his birthright to someone else for money. For money. And, and you see it in every spectrum of, of life. We, we don't seem to plan long term. She said, parks and gardens. Mm. Today we are crying about sanitation and all those in beautification of, of the city. We even formed ministries out of, ministry of that. And what happened? And yet, you take a few years back, a couple of decades ago, when parks and gardens was functioning. You had properly demarcated parks. You had the, the beautification. You could see flowers and greenery in this country. Now it's all concrete. And it doesn't seem to dawn on us. It's, it's a cultural thing. It's, it's, it's going to be very difficult for us to build consensus on these things unless we start re-educating ourselves, especially mm. the children from uh, scratch. Okay, let's move to Winneba this morning. Yesterday, I mean, this is a, a story that's well known, but uh, yesterday there was a, a scene there when uh, the, the uh, former vice chancellor, who was asked to step aside, uh, returned to uh, the campus insisting that the current vice chancellor uh, should cease to perform as a vice chancellor because he has an application from. A, a court in Wadiba. If you take a look at the final this morning, uh, the Senior Staff Association on page four have also filed a suit uh, seeking to remove Professor Fruboni as Vice Chancellor. Um, it's a story that is well known, but the Senior Staff are simply suggesting that he should step aside uh, based on an application from a Winneba High Court so that the uh, former vice chancellor who was asked to step aside and is being cleared by Yoko uh, will move in. Mr. Amwakwa, who is the uh, chair of the senior staff uh, in his red file before Winneba High Court and cited by the finders asking the court to re restrain Afroboni, his assigns, agents, or any other person through him from walking or driving within the precincts of the uh, main administration block of the university. That's where we are. We are unable to tell you what's happening uh, this morning, even though we are getting our people there. But let me start, Madam, the, the, the conversation with you. The, the storming there, the, the attempt to stop the vice chancellor from performing his duties. What do you make of it? We're told that the investor has been served the writ, uh, the application, the, the vice chancellor has been served the, uh, the application. But the storming of the, the campus and what nearly resulted in confusion, what do you make of it? Um, I don't think that that was a good thing to do. I don't think it's the right thing to do. Um, first and foremost, his, um, Afro Bruni is acting as vice chancellor. Mm. A court decision has removed him. There must be due process for me. Um, you just can't go in there and push him out or pull him out. There should be a process. First and foremost, at least a letter must go to Afro Bruni to, you know, um, vacate the seats and then a letter given to Avake to also take over. But for you to just go there and think that because the court has said and therefore you have a right to go and pull uh, Bruni out, I think that's most unfortunate. Um, we must do things legally and we must do things according to mm. the law and by due process. So what the senior staff members did um, or what uh, they have gone advocate. to court. Yes, yeah. going to court. Yes, you've gone to court. So let's wait for the court to come out with this ruling. If the court has come out and said um, a vindicated advocate and he should go back and take his seat, the very I don't think they went and pulled advocate out of his office. You, you understand? A letter was issued to advocate. There was some correspondence before advocate left. Mm. So why are you just going in the budget in to get? Uh, uh, Afro Bruni out. They must follow due process and that's, that's an institution of higher learning. So they must be doing the right things for other people to learn. Um, I don't think it's a good thing. But you see, at the end of the day, this whole thing is creating bigger problems. Because here we have the University of um, Development Studies um, not being able um, to 
Uh, is it U W uh, Education UBS? University education. of Education? Uh, uh, the yeah, congregation has been postponed because of because of this. I mean, it's some and, confusion. And, you yeah. know, it, it doesn't augur well for education in this country. It doesn't augur well for anything. We should get this thing worked out quickly, um, but we should use due process. I don't think that they have a right to just go and remove him um, from there. And I'm I'm wondering why they are even asking that his assignee, um, uh, Afu Bruni's assignees and himself should not be allowed to even drive within the, the confines of that place. Why? If, if he's no longer vice chancellor, it shouldn't stop him from going there. I don't think so. Richard, <laughs> did we bring this on ourselves? This is such a monumental disgrace to the institution of learning. It, it uh, baffles me because uh, if anything at all, that is where you expect uh, cool heads to reign and people, civility. Yes, to to take uh, due process and then ensure the right things are done. If if my memory serves me right, this process started in 2017, mm -hmm. and um, I think Pro Professor Aboke was removed through a high court decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then there is an investigation by the EOCO that clears him. Uh, I have my doubts if the EOCO clearing him necessarily means the court uh, decision uh, has uh, has been stepped down. That's yeah. Professor Avocat's argument. The one he's been, if he's been cleared by Yoko, then he needs to go and take his place. Yeah, as anyway, vice Yoko just did an investigation. Mm. They didn't pass a judgment. Mm. They don't have that right to do that. The court that took the decision will have to go back to that same place. And I think they have taken the uh, right steps going back to court. For an to application to restrain the sitting uh, vice yeah, chancellor. No, but they should also be asking for the reinstatement of the, uh, 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 the uh, former vice chancellor. The former vice chancellor. Um, you see, but I think to a large extent the governing council for me uh, has a problem and needs to be looked at. Uh, whoever the uh, the membership is, they need to take a second look at themselves and what their interest is, and look at the bigger picture of the interests of the students and of the country and our image. Mm. Why am I saying that? There have been certain decisions that have asked, uh, um, that ha are supposed to have been implemented by the governing council, which have not been followed. Uh, I.e., I think 11th of January, the Supreme Court ruled mm -hmm. that uh, Professor uh, is it Avoke, yes, Avoke, right. should be compensated by the council based on all that uh, transpired. Okay. The council didn't oblige. And I don't know if that is not uh, contempt. <laughs> uh, then. I think the Minister of State in charge of education somewhere on the 15th of January mm. also wrote to the council indicating that please comply by this uh, ruling and let's have the gentleman compensated because you don't want him suing and then uh, going after the little that the university has. So just comply with it. That has not been done. And then now we have this situation. but. I, it, is, it is my opinion that if the governing council is up and doing, they should be able to resolve this amongst themselves. It is because in the first place they were so inept, that's why it went where it got to. But for me, it looks like it's beyond them now. The case is properly before the uh, court. court. Let's wait for their decision. But I think Professor Aboke should also restrain himself and let the decision come. You cannot impose yourself uh, on, the, on the institution because you've been cleared by uh, EOCO. But can there be a gap? If a court is restraining Afroboni from performing his duties, there must be somebody in there. Hold on. There could be an acting position. That's why I'm saying that the governing council, if they were up to the task, would have taken the leadership role here and resolved the matter. And so they should step in and, and, and get a temporary decision or arrangement.
to let things continue whilst we wait for the decision, uh, the court decision. We cannot say it because the matter is in court. Uh, we we'll as well fold our arms and wait until the decision comes. The school would have to run. Mm. And it's the governing council's responsibility to step in. Where are they in all this? Although well, Suhini, I, I, I remember well the, 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 the president virtually pleading that the, the people should sit down and mend their ways. It didn't happen. Yeah, right. It's a shame. I mean, sometimes um, advice is taken seriously based on the neutrality and independence of the one giving the advice. If parties cannot, you know, trust or have confidence in the one giving the advice, it is going to be ignored. And I think that is what is making the situation at the University of Education, I mean, Education Winneba, you know, get out of hand. It is the needless introduction of partisan politics and very unhealthy interest, pure and simple. It's just the interest that is not holy and that is largely partisan. That has led to the murky situation that we have on our hands as far as the University of Education Winneberg case is concerned. Look, Mr. Professor Avoke was just left with about six months to end his term. Six months. Yes, November is the, the, the date. It was just like with mm. six months. But people were so intolerant of him. People for, based on what I have picked up from the ground, unholy reasons and partisan considerations, were so uncomfortable and intolerant of his day that they had to mastermind <coughs> and bring up Trump up charges against him to get him removed. And so, because of the impatience to wait for six months for the man to finish his tenure, look at the mess that we have on our hands, years on. Years on, look at the mess. It is so embarrassing, it is shameful when you follow the stories. I recall one time, because of how, you know, murky the situation was, Professor Raymond Atiguba, had to even caution the president to stay away from the issues there. Because as commander in chief, he needed to live above that pettiness that was happening at the university. But whoever advised the president did him so much wrong. And so the president got involved and attended the coronation of uh, Professor uh, Bruni at a time that the matter was still in court. But he didn't do anything wrong attending the, the, the coronation, the investiture. I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. It, it compromised him. It compromised him. You know, as, as, as leader of the nation, when especially institutions that are supposed to be nonpartisan and academia is one of it, uh, have difficulties such as the one that was emerging at the University of Education, Winneba, you would have expected somebody like him to stay away, observe the things, and get involved in a way that will bring about a lasting solution. But when you get involved in a very compromising manner, then you, because his posturing seemed to have suggested that he was in support of one faction and their actions. And look at the irony. Yesterday, I'm told that when Professor Avoke got to the university campus, he was escorted by police officers, the crime officer and others, only to be stopped by national security officers. I mean, what, 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 what is that telling you? That there isn't, there's even confusion in the hierarchy of the national security as a result of this matter. How can a crime officer, police officer, lead a man to a place only for other people claiming to be national security officers. But should he have stormed them? the campus? We'll get there, right? Mm. You see, that's why I'm saying that it's shameful, it's unhealthy, and I mean, it's embarrassing that we allowed those unholy interests and partisan considerations to get us to this point. Why? Professor Avoke got a Supreme Court ruling in his favor. The Supreme Court ruling, you know, quashed the High Court ruling 
that was used to, you know, remove him from office in April this year. The Supreme Court said the council didn't have the right to do what it did. So if he has been waiting all this while, and nobody is perhaps engaging him in a manner that assures him that the right will be wrong, mm. I mean the wrong will be righted, the wrong done to him will be righted. What do you expect him to do? He has the ruling on his side. He has the law on his side. He was removed based on a, you know, an Yoko report. The Yoko has exonerated him further. Apart from the Supreme Court ruling, he has the Yoko report also exonerating him further. And if you claim that I did ABC for which I denied and got me out of office based on ABC, and then investigations have proven that I didn't do it as I denied. What else do you expect? Shouldn't you wait for him to be reinstated? Because the application that he is had why, how only is he restrained the sitting vice chancellor from performing his duties. How, they don't ask him to go how, to No, I, I, I think that we have to understand mm. that a wrong was done to Prof. Savoke. Right. How are authorities engaging him to right that wrong? She didn't he wait for due process, as Madame was suggesting? Which due process? If you don't so see, if you do not see, if you do not see due process starting, if you do not see due process, you know, uh, uh, underway, isn't the due process who, where a court has asked that the sitting VC should be stopped from performing his duties? Mm -hmm. So perhaps the due process has started, and he he could be. You should remember that even his removal was quashed by a Supreme Court ruling. So per that ruling, he can walk back to office. I see. Because if, 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 if the Supreme Court quashed the, 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 the decision to remove him, so what it means is that there is no decision to remove him. That's what that ruling means. So what automatically it means, uh, it means is that he's still in office. He's still supposed to be in office. So I'm saying if you want it to be done in a very tidy manner, like... Madame is suggesting, I'm sure that is what he, she calls due process, mm. in a tidy manner, then authorities must be engaging him yeah. in a way to assure him that he will get back to work. But if it is as if his business as usual, we do not regard the ruling from the court, we do not regard the clearance by the Yoko, you know, you have you know, uh, 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 the right. I mean, yes, you are not guilty. You are right. But we, 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 like, we, we don't care. We are, we have the power. We are, we are in charge. We don't care. I mean, obviously, what do you expect him to do? To sit with his right in between his legs? So it is about how the authorities in this matter, like the Ministry of Education, for example, how are they engaging him to assure him that indeed, mm. you know, whatever wrong was done him will be righted? How are they engaging him? If there's no communication to assure him that there is some process in place to rectify the wrong that was done to him, I will not fault the action that he took yesterday. <sighs> Richard, right. wrap up on this for me. Uh, I'm at pains to have to rebut uh, the, the arguments of my brother and the seeming uh, effort to politicize this matter. I'm not politicizing it. And Your government politicized the matter. I, I didn't say it properly. Now I'll put it properly. I'm not politicizing and, it. Let's be honest. And you didn't have to say it. Once you mentioned the president, you have politicized it. <laughs> He's our you see, president. And the, 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 you see, the confusion, you your, your conf the confusion you in your own statement is the, is the problem. In, in one breath, the president went for the investiture. the investiture of this VC. And it means he's supporting one faction. That is a suggestion. Is that what I said? Well, that is the implication. It seems. Right. Some suggestion should not go because yes. of the, the, the yes. situation there. And yet, you don't think that if he had not gone to, it could mean he's supporting another faction. <laughs> In the same breath, they are supposed to have gone, or he's supposed to have gone for the investiture of the current one. 
okay and yet actions by the ministry and the minister is showing that advocate should go back and has actually instructed the the council to obey the supreme court ruling and actually even compensate the gentleman so and then you conclude that government should actually get involved and engage advocate and assure him and yet you are saying that we shouldn't take a position the government is his employers but that is a point so okay. if at any point in time government is acting it would appear to be in favor of one or the other you cannot appear to be for both but you let the ruling of the day stand when the president went there was a ruling that asked him to uh, that set him aside mm. so the president has to obey and do the need for now a new ruling has come and says that the old one go away and let the new one uh, and the, uh, the new one go away and let the old one come back the government through the ministry gives the same instruction and you have a problem with it so what exactly do you want how should you have acted as a president in this matter take your own decision and ask him go out or don't go he's obeyed what the rulings have been the first one was the high court so he was set aside then the president had to go because if you don't go it gives the implication or the uh, 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 the, the feeling that you are against the the one that is coming and yet there's a ruling that set the uh, 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 yeah, the old one aside so aside. naturally the reason is that this is a new person and the legitimate person the president obeyed and went now there's a new ruling that says that you are not the rightful person and this person should come back. The minister on the 15th of March gives instructions to that effect. The man is not going. You want us to go and then what? Uh, uh, use uh, brute force and bring him out. That one to you have something to say. By saying they should resort to the courts and the governing council to resolve the problem unless you want the government to be physically involved. Madam. Right. I thought I was. You, you, want, you want you want you want to get a quick reaction? <laughs> okay, <laughs> then let me give one before Madame wrap up. Yeah, because Madame spoke before, <laughs> so I just thought I should come. Yeah. But I mean, you are the boss. Quickly, so we're we're, we're wrapping up. Yeah, you know, I, I I I I think that my brother has to be very fair. Like I indicated, I only highlighted the partisanship in the whole process. I didn't politicize it i only okay. highlighted the politicization <laughs> in the matter by who? and and yes by 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 people in in, that's, in, that's in government speculative. especially in government. but you see when he talked about why the president went at a time that there was a high court ruling mm. it is also clear it is also clear that at that time there was a palpable challenge in court for which reason the lawyer of advocate wrote personally to the president do you understand? And so I'm saying as an arbiter that he is supposed to be as president, not attending the investiture wouldn't have meant that he was on the side of advocate. But it would that's have your, showed. That's your view. No, yes. Richard would, thinks yes, that's it would, what I'm saying. There's a judgment and there's a it challenge. Which showed, one will you go by? It judgment or showed, a challenge? It would have showed that he oh. is restraining himself so that he will have the support and 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 you know uh, 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 credibility required to resolve the matter that is the point that i am making but the president even when he went there in his speech acknowledged that there was a challenge and that all was not well and that is when he was suggesting that they should speak with each other and i'm saying he could have done that better if he was not at the investiture for example if he was speaking from his seat and telling them that I wish you well at your investiture, but this is the challenge that I need you guys to sit down and resolve, or especially maybe with me, like he did in the case of the Black Stars. He, he got right. involved personally. Right, and right. Sorry, but right. Sorry, sorry, right. sorry. Just, to do okay. quickly, uh, wrap up. Just, just because, because we are wrapping up. Just, just because we are quickly wrapping up. up. You see, the 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 whole academia today is not happy with some of these interferences. In are you you're speaking for them? I, I, I know. I okay. have listened to them okay. at right. different fora express their reservations 
in terms of the levels of interference in the administration of, 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 of uh, institutions of study in this country. And I think it must serve as, you know, a source of concern to this government because we have always held that right. the academia is to be insulated somewhat yes. from governmental interference. Yes. And yet, yet we are the same person recommending that the, the president Russell. should interfere. How did I say it should interfere? What do, exactly do you want? You are How saying that you should not have attended the event mm -hmm. yes. so that when they think comes, when, then you yes, should exactly. When Who they, when they no, invite which, 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 no, which of the laws setting up the universities makes the president the final arbiter of this matter? It's the court. The court at a point decided that you are not supposed to be there. Somebody else ca is to come. The person has come. The president has come to grace the occasion, and then advises that let's talk to let's each other and resolve it. Now there's a new decision. The government is telling them go by the new decision. That one you have a problem. Right. You are also yeah, forgetting that. that. You are also that. forgetting yes. that. You are also yes. forgetting okay. that during uh, that ruling, no. the, the, the high court the politics ruling, in all this. Advocate well, was but also there were forced out of office. Considerations. Okay. Okay. Madam, was wrap up on this. I'm just saying that at this at this juncture, the governing council must be up and doing. Um, if possible, they should get to Avoke and get to Afro Bruni. Um, um, Afro Bruni to leave and Avoke to come in. This shouldn't be a big deal because there is a judgment and it's been passed. And so long as we now know that Avoke has the right to be on that seat, I think the governing council should be able to issue a letter to um, Afro Bruni to vacate the seat and to give Avoke the right to go and take the And would he have what it takes to bring? the people together now that I'm even sure is. I'm sure they will uh, well the, 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 the Supreme Court has ruled and what else do they have to say I'm grateful to be able to get to, to, to get grateful but I know Diana is a member of the CPP Rachel Yama is a member of the NPP Honorable Suhini is MP for Tamale a member of the NDC gentlemen and lady I'm grateful for your Wednesday morning stay here sports comes up next on your screens good morning once again